Hey y'all, welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out another one of my videos. And in today's video, as you saw from the title, we got some new Odin's Eye palettes to talk about. Now, if you missed it, which I'm sure you didn't, but if you missed it, Odin's Eye came out with the Stone and Rock palette and the Jewels and Gem palette. So two new palettes are from Odin's Eye, along with a bunch of jewelry, which I am wearing one of them today. And I'll go ahead and stick a little picture here so you guys can see the jewelry. I tend to, in my videos, focus on the palettes just because that's what I love, but I do want to feature it because they're really fun pieces. They're definitely heavier pieces that I don't think I would wear except for special occasions or a video. Definitely not every day. I had to take out my everyday Ana Luisa necklaces to put these on, but they're a little, he I mean, I should say they're a little heavy, but I mean, considering how big this is, I don't, I've been wearing them for like an hour. They don't feel bad at all. Not that type of heavy, but they're not a type of jewelry that I personally would want to wear for the entire day, that type of thing, but they're definitely pretty. But anyway, I just wanted to feature that for a quick minute because I know I'll forget, but the palace is what the majority of this video is going to be about and they came out with two new palettes. I just got it so I'm a little late to sharing my thoughts but I did want to play with it and just give you guys my opinion because that's what I do on my channel and I feel like it's a bit of an unpopular opinion because when I first saw these palettes I was just kind of like okay and I actually asked on my Instagram I was like what do you guys think about this palette because maybe it's just me maybe I'm just being you know critical or just picky but uh, I asked on my Instagram and I'm just gonna run through some of the comments you guys said some of you said needed love it so excited so it is you know definitely personal preference I can totally hear and understand why some people would be really excited for this but uh, a couple people did say neutral with a fun twist not their best but not boring at all breathtaking packaging which I have to agree Odin's Eye always does amazing packaging and then a couple other comments I got was kind of overwhelming, too neutral, don't love it, but I've seen some great looks done with it. Some people said boring, it's dot 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 fine. So it was nice to know that I'm not alone when I was looking at this going like, mm. and I think my biggest reason for just kind of going, really? Like, okay, is because I feel like I've seen it before and maybe it's just because I am someone who owns so much from Odin's Eye, so definitely keep that in mind. They send me PR, I have tried a lot of their palettes and I feel like it's a little bit redundant, which I can go ahead and open the palette so you guys can see. This is the Jewels and Gem palette and then this is the Stone and Rock palette and I'm sure comes as no surprise that I played with this one today because it's got greens in it. But I feel like when I was looking at it, I've seen it before and maybe not to this scale definitely not to this scale of being this large and so kind of focused on those more earthy neutral tones I definitely think I'm not saying that they've done this exact palette before but I've definitely seen these colors before in their palettes, especially like when we're thinking of these tones, I feel like I've seen it in definitely the Gila palettes, um, maybe a little bit of Annette's, uh, Annette's palette that they did, even in the more recent palette she, they did with Makeup Just For Fun palette. And I'll leave, I'll leave my Odin's Eye like uh, playlist down below because they come out with a lot of palettes, but I feel like I've seen it before. And even this palette where not so much in their early days before I was into Odin's Eye and trying all their palettes, I feel like they did, they did color stories like this with a pop or two of a different type of colors. And even a little bit, I thought the Lauren May palette, uh, May Beauty palette, because it was also a little bit neutral. So I think that was my biggest hang up with these palettes is I saw them and I was like, wow, really pretty, but the the color story didn't blow me out of the water. It just felt a little bit like, oh, okay, like we've seen that before. It wasn't anything super unique, which I feel like Odin's Eye is always really good at just really keeping it like, here's this color, but we're going to throw a pop of something fun and different in there and just keeping me, you know, excited when it comes to their color stories. And they, these color stories, while they're beautiful, they're a little bit more of just like, simplistic I guess is the best way I can describe it so so those are kind of like my initial thoughts going into it I really do like the stone and rock palette though not to you know dog on these palettes at all if I'm wanting a very neutral palette this is my type of neutral and maybe it won't be for everyone maybe you guys see this and you're like Katie that's not a neutral palette but for me like an everyday neutral palette this is going to be a great go-to like if I want to go and I still want to wear my greens but I want to keep it neutral and kind of you know nothing too crazy and loud this is going to be a great palette I can definitely see me reaching for it when I'm wanting to travel and not play with too much color that type of thing so it's a pretty palette. I'm not saying that I don't like it and I'm not saying that I won't get my use out of it, but it's just, I don't know, it just surprised me that Odin's Eye didn't surprise me, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I do want to mention though with the Jewels and Gems palette because I am not going to be touching this and let's just do a giveaway in this video. I'll leave a rafflecopter form down below. I'm going to give this away. I am not going to just ship this alone. I'll get like flat rate mailing box and I'll load it up with other goodies, but I want to give this to someone so that they can use this and enjoy it. It did come a little bit messy. I think you can see right here with 
with, I think it is, this shade, which is looks a little bit more of the flaky shade. I'll package it up as best I can, so hopefully there's no more damage, but I just wanted to go to someone who actually used it, and, you know, I could try it, I could review it, but I feel like, especially with Odin's Eye, and, you know, trying out the other palette, you know, I tried this one out today, I know it's a good formula, I don't need to mess with it, and it's not a color story that excites me, so I'd rather go to one of you guys who it can excite, and it's absolutely beautiful when it comes to the packaging, so hopefully whoever does win this will enjoy it and get to put it to good use, so definitely check down in the description box for the link to the raffle copter is usually what I use to uh, enter your name for a chance to win. Alright, so I think that's enough chatter at the beginning, just want to give you guys my first impression thoughts just on the collection as a whole before we dive into it, but let's go ahead and get right into the actual tutorial. I only did one look, the look that you see on my face today, so this is definitely not an in in-depth review, but I did want to play with it and give you guys my thoughts and let you see me create something so you can see the quality of it and if the blendability and all that and the pigmentation is what you expect and you typically see from Odin's eyes, so I always find them helpful. So let's go ahead and jump right into that and then we'll talk a little bit more at the end. All right, so let's hop right into Stone and Rock palette. You guys know, even though this might be, you know, a little bit unexciting or like something we've seen from them before, I'm always a sucker for a good green, grungy green palette. So this palette right here, yes, it's more neutrals, but it has those pops of interest that get me. So we're gonna we're gonna play with it today, and I cannot wait. I think I'm gonna go into let's do a little bit of passage on the outer corner, and I'm going to stack cheer on top of it. So it gets a lot of depth, but it's still kind of grungy green. I'm gonna grab this little pencil brush. ES4 from Profusion, and let's see how it looks. I do have to be careful because I did do my face. Try not to go too crazy heavy on my face because after this I'm gonna go sweat with the kids outside at an event, so um, didn't wanna have too much on my face, but just a little bit there to give some depth. I can bring it up to touch, and yeah, then I'm gonna just take, honestly, that same brush, clean it off a, a little bit, nothing too crazy tap into the green and we're gonna put this on top and just go a little bit bigger just so overall the outer corner has a green hue to it but it has as much depth as I can give it. I, I'm not anticipating having any problems when it comes to the quality of the eyeshadow palettes. I feel like Odin's Eye has a really solid formula. Um, the shimmers are always kind of a question mark to me because it always depends on if they're more pigmented, if they're more textured and all that, and I really can't know that until I get into it. So I will be curious to see what I think about their um, shimmers that they're including in here. But as for the mattes, I'm not anticipating <laughs> any surprises. So I'm just going to go like that and I'll bring it up just a wee bit. Nice and pigmented, just like I would expect, suspect, expect for Odin's Eye. All right, I'm going to take a nice skinny brush. Is this a good skinny? Maybe even skinnier than that. What? I don't know what I'm doing, but I like to just make it up as I go. This has got a nice taper to it, but I would like it a little bit skinnier just so I can control. Yeah, because I think I'm going to put some depth before I go for the brighter color that I want in my inner corner. So I'm going to grab this E36. I need a couple more brushes like this in my collection because I'm always looking for them. And I'm going to go into, let's do Exuberance, which is this shade right here. That looks super pretty. And I just want this to deepen up in the crease. I don't want it to go too, or like into the crease and towards the inner corner here. Because I want to put a lot of um, brightness other than this. Although this is actually looking a bit brighter than I anticipate. It doesn't have a whole lot of depth. Hmm. Maybe. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to change it up because this is looking, maybe it's a brush too, but a little bit more of a lighter color. So I'm just going to blend it out just a wee bit here. And then I want to go into a different shade to get the depth that I'm looking for. So let's go into um, Dreamland right here. I don't want to go too dark, but I like a good bit of depth when it comes to the very like deepest part of my eye socket, kind of right where I have a line for the shimmers when I put them on. But these are uh, layering on top of each other very nicely. And then I'm going to go in to, where is that brush? I just had it. We'll do the Singe E02 brush. This is nice. And I want to go into Madness now. Looks brighter uh, in person than it's showing in the viewfinder but maybe it's just my viewfinder and the footage will show it more true to life. But this is such a bright shade. I want this all over my crease. 
And I honestly don't know what I want to do for my lid. I kind of want to just do the bright green, but I feel like I should maybe do one of the other shades. Because I'm sure this is kind of predictable. <laughs> I think that's the thing, like, while I like these type of shades, it's definitely, in my opinion, like, an everyday neutral palette for me. Because the tones are all so, like... I guess safe is what I'm trying to get at because they're all kind of the same in that same kind of tone. There's no pop that I can go for, I suppose is what I'm getting at. I'm gonna go back into this shade and just work on this line for a bit, but I'm gonna go and work on it with this, uh, this shade right here, Exuberance. Um, but that's why it's very, in my opinion, kind of like an everyday neutral palette because I can't really go for any pops. There's nothing super loud. So as far as like creativity, this might be my own limitations. Maybe you guys have seen some videos of people being so crazy creative with it. But for me personally and where I am at with, you know, doing makeup, I feel a little bit limited to like this type of greeny grungy eye look, you know, in the, in the crease and stuff or just a neutral. So that's where I feel like a little bit, you know, I don't know, there's no pop that really like grabs me. And it's just kind of like a oh, nice everyday Oh wait, I went to the wrong shade. Um, nice everyday type of eyeshadow palette. It's pretty, but I, I also feel like I was saying, I, I feel like I've kind of seen this before, especially with their last collection being the influencer collabs between those two, um, the one that's kind of purple green and then the more neutral uh, palette. I feel like this is kind of a mesh up of that or even you could say that like this one is an expansion well it doesn't have purple so never mind i don't know i just feel like i've seen this from them before it didn't feel like oh you know really cool color story really unique it's just more of a something i've seen from them before and maybe it is because they do a lot of those pop uh, those like you know pops of greens and they have a lot of the grungy greens i know angelica had grungy green in her collab palette um annette had a you know the grungy greens in it and more the bright greens for uh, tina the fancy face and even the newest collabs like with makeup just for fun she had like the greens in it so maybe it's just something they do a lot that's why it feels very i've seen this before but that's the only kind of drawback that i've been feeling with this palette not to say that that's a bad thing if you've never tried anything from odin's eye but you've always heard people raving about it. This is definitely gorgeous per usual when it comes to presentation is beautiful. I absolutely love that cover. There's a beautiful display piece. And then, you know, it's a great, uh, so far great quality for the mats. We'll see when I get to the shimmers, but great quality for the mats and stuff. So it's what I would expect of them. So if you've never tried anything from them, but you like, you know, kind of this, this, these type of colors, I definitely think it's worth the purchase for you. But if you're also like a huge fan of Odin's Eye and you own like almost all of their palettes, I don't think you're getting anything new and unique with this palette, I think is what I'm trying to get at. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more touch up here and I'm gonna finish out, and, or not finish out, catch up this side, and then we'll be moving on to the shimmers. Okay, so I couldn't figure out what I wanted for my lid, so I went ahead and did it. And of course the one that I went to was like a super flaky one. And so I now have sparkle all over my face, but what you gonna do? All right, so let me do a little bit of glitter primer. I'm just using the NYX. Although considering I'm gonna be sweating a ton, I should probably use a top glitter primer as, or you know, seal it in with the liquid glitter from MBA on top as well. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I just won't care because I'm also gonna be outside with sunglasses on because it'll be sunny. But anyway, we're gonna top this and then I'll show you guys the ones I am going to use. I almost wanted to use that one that looks like a multi-chrome, the High Spirits. I'm pretty sure it's a multi-chrome. Obviously I didn't use it all over my lid to confirm it, but it looks like a blue green. And then sometimes it can look more of a lime green. So my uneducated guess is that it's a multi-chrome, but I feel like a lot of people have used that because it is also the nice and bright one. So I was trying to think of something different. So I decided to go into Gleefulness, which is, very, very chunky. And these are the type of shadows from Odin's Eye I just don't like, or not chunky, textured. A lot of people like the textured look, I do not. But I'll show you what it looks like because I already used it. And I'll show you how I smooth it out to get more of a finish and look that I like because I don't like the textured flaky, I don't like that. So anyway, I started popping it on and it started falling all over the place. So I pressed it really firmly with a very, very, very skinny or like flat brush. This is, this is technically a concealer brush from Dose of Colors. And so I pick it up and I press it down as much as I can and I try to look to make sure there's no obvious really bad chunks. And then I press it down and then push pretty, pretty firmly on my lid to smooth it out and put it where I want. 
That way it doesn't look so much flaky or textured and it has a little bit more of a smooth appearance on my lid, which is what I prefer when it comes to my, uh, my eye looks. I don't like the textured, chunky, flaky look, especially with sweating and with my hooded eyes. It'll just flake off and get on my face and then it'll look weird and patchy. So I don't like the textured shadows, so I just smooth them out take a little extra time to smooth them out like this. And honestly, one or two, I got one right here and then like maybe one or two in there, but not too bad at the fallout since I was so careful going in. So now I'm gonna go into what you can see, I think, the flakes from that shade all over. But I'm gonna go into a passion now, which is that green. And we're gonna put that over the rest of the lid. And I'm gonna pack on the uh, shadow onto this. This is more of a firmly pressed and finer type of uh, shadow, which is what I like. Nice pigment to it, and it looks like it has a bit of a multicolor sparkle to it. At least I think I see multi-colors as I'm blending it in, which is very, very pretty. And it, like I said, it's a lot more of a finer, milled consistency to it, which I like. Has a nice soft look to it, nice soft coloring, which is very Odin's Eye-esque, nothing too intense, so definitely like comfortable everyday type of look. This is a palette I would reach for multiple times. This is my type of neutral palette for sure. So there we go, just like that. And then per usual, you guys know the drill. I'm gonna go back into that darkest green in the palette sheer, and I'm just going to tap along the edge. So at this point, I'm not gonna bore you by repeating it. I'm gonna go off camera and do my lower lash line and then we'll come back to do the inner corner because I'm just gonna use the darkest shade green that I just used, Cheer, and then I'm going to just pack madness and buff it out as much until I like how it looks, so be right back. Okay, I'm back, I did a wing, smoked out my lower lash line. Uh, oh yeah, I need to put on a uh, face highlighter, but before we do that, let's go ahead and put on the inner corner highlighter, and I want to use Frenzy, which is this shade right here. This shade looks like it'd be very pretty all over the lid, but I wanted to use it as the inner corner, so that's what we're doing today. It's one of those kind of transparent shades, or it appears to be one of those transparent but super sparkly and maybe even like transformative and duochrome -y. so let's see, which I like. It's fun to use on your eyes if you're kind of wanting to go a little bit more simple with your makeup or you know, a little understated. I like to use, uh, you know, neutral colors and then pop something like this all over the lid. It can be super pretty for sure. Very nice. Not too, um, not too flaky or loose and it's got a nice, very fine type of texture to it. So nice for the inner corner. I wasn't sure if it was one of those chunkier or flakier type of formulas, but that's a really nice this is a good brush to pack it on, but it appears to be like it's not chunky. It looks a lot more fine than that inner corner, or like that shade we used on the lid that was fairly chunky. So that's super pretty. I'm gonna put that there. Very nice. All right, I got sparkle going all over the place. Dust my face off. Oh good, this brush has a little bit of powder on it, so I can just clean up. And now let's go ahead and maybe moon talk. I'll use Odin's Eye highlighter. I think this is pretty. It's always a little gamble as far as like, what is it gonna shift to and how crazy intense is this gonna be? We're gonna go very light. At least that's my intent. Just a wee bit. <laughs> okay, maybe harder than I want. So I'm just gonna do that. And then after I deposit it, I'm going to dust off this brush and blend it out. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit more green than I'm going for. Honestly, I might just go ahead and I'm gonna take just a warm tone highlighter. This is from Glamlight. I'm gonna put it right on top because I just don't want it to be too green icy today. Like I said, I'm going outside. I'm not going anywhere crazy and I don't want a green highlight today. So that's a pretty combo, kind of tamed it down. It's beautiful, but it's just the, the the colors are so strong. You have to really want a colorful highlighter with the Odin's eye. Anyway, but that is pretty much gonna be it. Let me go ahead and I got, my nose is so dry. I'm just not taking care of my skin very well. Let me go ahead and pick a lip color. I could just grab, oh, this is from Kaleidos. I think Odin's eye's got lip colors, right? Let me grab one Odin's eye. And this one is the, what is it, light peach. I use this one a lot. And it might be a little bit, no, it's fine. A little bit like warmer pinkier than I'd like, but it's fine. I am not picky when it comes to lips. lips you guys know that. Oh, what I can do is just uh, put this on 
nicely, Katie. I'm gonna take my stone lip gloss from Maybelline because it's a little bit more cool tone. And I'll just put a touch on top. We'll call it good. There, I tried. Okay, so let me get some close-ups and we can close out this video. And here we are all finished up. I took some close-ups, which I'll go ahead and stick into the video right here. But this is the final look, and it's a look that I love. I feel like it's a look that I've done a million times on my channel. It's definitely a look I've done two million times in my personal life because if I'm not filming and there's a palette like this, this is a look that I do so, so very often. So it's definitely one of my favorite type of looks. It's beautiful, not to say that it's not. Uh, everything blended beautifully. I I love these type of tones. Very pretty. I was very pleased with the quality that I found in both the shimmers and the mattes. And even the, the chunky shadow that I was talking about, Gleefulness, I do appreciate that I can still get it to smooth out and it doesn't become a nightmare, a textured nightmare on my eyes. So I love that about the formula. So overall, I have nothing but great things to say about it, even though I was kind of dogging on it in the beginning. It is a more, you know, tame type of palette. There's no pops of color that super excite me, but it's a really nice palette that I know I'm going to use a lot and enjoy getting very neutral for me type of looks very everyday type of looks for me. But above all, I hope this video was helpful. That's always my intent with these type of videos is just to show you guys how they apply on the eyes, how they work for me, what my thoughts are on the palette and all that. And hopefully you guys got something helpful from this video. And I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Kind of like I asked on Instagram, I'd love to know for you guys, was this a, a collection that you were super excited for? Or are you more of like, you know, the Odin's Eye fan like I am? And you're just kind of like, hmm, I feel like I've seen that from you before, Odin's Eye. It felt a little bit like a filler collection, I think is the best way I can describe it kind of like they needed to come out with something so they came out with something you know maybe safe but maybe it's just me and not being aware of their you know their uh, what do you call their customer base the people who use their palette and maybe a lot of people have been asking for larger palettes that are very neutral and kind of have these tones to them so maybe it's just me always wanting the pop of color the pop of fun and to enjoy playing with makeup but I'm sure there's tons of people out there who also just want a nice simple palette that they can grab to create really easy go-to looks that aren't super crazy like I tend to like them so I try to keep that in mind as well but I hope this video was helpful for you guys and that is going to do it from me for this video as always thank you guys so very much for watching if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up as it helps me in the whole youtube algorithm uh check me out over on instagram if you're not already i'm lady katie 92 over there trying to get back onto reels and up close eye pictures and all that so i'll try to post one of this look because i really like it but yeah i think that's everything i wanted to say so i'll see you guys very soon in my next video bye guys